everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi and I would like to welcome you to a brand new episode of In The Loop. Now, as you may have been able to tell from the title of this video, today's vlog is a new Q&A and I am so, so excited to share these answers with all of you lovely folks at home. So before getting to the A's to your Q's, remember to subscribe to Ambi, like this video, and of course drop me a comment if you have any other questions, if you're surprised by an answer, and so on and so forth, because I love hearing from you guys. Alright, let's get to those answers, shall we? First off, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody who left me a question. Uh, there were so many to sort through. There were like hundreds of them and I had to narrow it down to 10, which is really difficult uh, because you don't want me here blabbing for like three hours now, do we? So a uh, massive thank you because it is so flattering that you guys still give a shit about Ambi, me, and you want to know more about everything going on because it has been a very, very exciting time. Now, as always, like the past Q&As, I have all of the questions on my handy dandy Ambi phone and it looks a little different this time because I actually went out and got a pops pop socket yes a pop socket for my phone um, I know it's a huge trend and I hate hopping on the trend train but I was in bed so many times and I'd be like this and it would just fall flat on my face so uh, now I got this and hopefully we can avoid having a phone falling on my face all right let's get to that first question our first question comes from Bloody Roman, and they're asking, how do you calm down nerves before an interview? Love you. Sending back lots of love your way. All right, so nerves. I posted a vlog on nerves, actually, about two weeks ago, and it was the four interviews I was most nervous for. So you can go check that out. I want to let it pop pop up on your screen right there. So when it comes to nerves before interviews, I don't really get nervous anymore. It's more so anxiety and excitement in a really good way. Um, I always try to channel those nerves into something great because uh, I'm doing what I love. I'm interviewing, I'm talking with people. So what I do though, if I do get nerves is I'll try to shake them out. So I do this little pre-interview dance. I think I've mentioned this before, but it's kind of like you just jiggle and you, you get all the nerves out. And uh, I've had a lot of interviews look at me like you're crazy. I've had some join in with me and uh, some luckily don't notice. So that's what I do. I just kind of get the nerves out and go into the interview knowing, hey, this is going to be great. It's going to be a good time. There's nothing to be nervous about. You're just talking with somebody. So yeah, that's kind of how I get all the nerves out. Next up is a question from Josh and Josh is asking how do you deal with feelings of burnout as someone that makes content on a frequent basis? So with my job, I am out a lot at concerts and wrestling shows um, So when I have time off, which is rare, but when I do have downtime I like spending it with my family with my dogs watching TV I've been watching a lot of Curb Your Enthusiasm and Seinfeld because I think Larry David is a genius um, And the new Curb season, just a little hint hint, is phenomenal, so definitely Go check that out. Um, but I just like relaxing. I've been watching some kung fu movies lately, catching up on some Netflix shows. Uh, I just like taking my mind off things, writing lyrics, that kind of stuff. Um, Ambi, it's so difficult to escape from because it's my job and being the owner, I constantly have to have my phone with me. So it's like every few minutes it's beeping and you're like, oh damn, your mind gets sidetracked again to work. Um, so to avoid burnout, I guess it's like enjoy what you do because there's no escaping it. So luckily I found something I love and I get to do that every day. Um, so I don't get burnt out too often. It happens when you're doing like 20 interviews in a weekend, but I'm enjoying it. So that's my tip, I guess. Was that even a tip? Just take it as a tip, that's my tip. Here we have a question from Derek and he's asking, would you ever consider a career as a professional wrestler or referee or manager in the wrestling profession? I've actually given this some thought. Uh, I see every week, uh, women and men friends in the squared circle and I just genuinely don't think I am cut out for it um, I'm a total wimp. I bruise like a peach. I know I may not look like it, but I bruise like a peach um, So I just don't think I could be a professional wrestler I'd love to run the ropes and stuff and try it um, and kind of see what they go through But I'm just I just couldn't do it too much of a baby. However, I'd like to say I'm pretty good on the mic. I got some attitude, some sass. So I totally think I could Paul Heyman the shit out of something and be a great manager. So if anyone's watching, hit me up. Next is a question from the Reject 91 and they wanted to know, do, do, do. Uh, they wanted to know if you were to have a band, what would your name be? Now my sister and I growing up, my sister Maddie, uh, we would goof off and write a few songs together. There are only a couple, but uh, we were called the donkeys. And I even have like an old CD that has a donkey on it. Um, Cause we were just a couple of jackasses, still are to this day, especially me. Um, so it's called the donkeys. And then I don't remember if it was her or I who made it up, but uh, we created a band name called Hearing Random that I always quite liked. So it would either be the donkeys or Hearing Random. The next record we're spinning comes from Bella Thompson Hill. I love how elegant your name is. Um, and she was asking, how do you get your eyebrows so perfect? 
oh my gosh, you have no idea how many times I was asked about my eyebrows uh, when people were submitting questions. It's like, how do you do your eyebrows? Are your eyebrows real? Are they really that thick? Um, yes, these are my eyebrows. Um, they are real. They are bushy and they are crazy. And uh, that's them. So to answer the question about how I get them so perfect, thank you for the compliment. Um, I'm a happy bushy brows are in now because I went through some phases growing up where like it wasn't cool to have big brows so I tweezed them and they were small and I regret that so much. Um, so I pretty much leave my eyebrows natural um, and they're very big but the only thing is I was kind of born with the Madonna complex where one eyebrow is like perfect and goes one way and then the other one at the front like it flicks up a little bit which is kind of odd. Um, so I let leave everything I'll leave it be and I'll take this, I think it's called a spoolie, I'm no makeup expert, it's called a spoolie and I just at the front like put them up a little bit so they match and then um, I just fill in like just the front just a little bit because um, I don't want them to look drawn on and freaky so that's what I do. Um, I think it was Broad City where they said today I realized that my eyebrows are sisters, not twins. Um, and that was like a revelation to me because so many girls are like, oh, they have to be perfect. Blah, blah, blah. So yeah, sisters, not twins. That's how I get these things like that. I just leave them. Next is a question from Scott and Scott asked, if you had to get a tattoo of a line from a song, what line would you choose and why? P.S. Love the channel. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Scott. Um, so I gave this a lot of thought and I actually wrote some lyrics down because uh, uh, for those of you who know me, just finding this here on my phone, um, I'm a lyrics fanatic. I've showed you this before, but this is something I've had since about grade nine. And there are thousands and thousands of lyrics in a notepad uh, just because I love reminiscing and I'm a hopeless romantic so hard. So I love writing down lyrics and, uh, and my own as well. So, okay, stop rambling, answer your questions. So, you know that song by The Offspring, um, Pretty Fly for a White Guy? There's a line in there I love, and it's, he asked for a 13, but they drew a 31. So I'd get that tattooed, like, down my whole arm. Just kidding! Okay, so the lyrics I would get tattooed, um, I have three. One would be, you remind me life can be fun, from You Can't Be My Girl, Darwin Dees. I find the beauty in that lyric, it's just so lovely. Telling somebody, hey, life can be tough at times, but you remind me life can be fun. You bring the joy out in life. It's such a good line. Um, lyric number two is Your Eyes Got Me Dreaming from Ebony Eyes by Bob Welch. This is a classic. It was played in my house so much. And just to think, looking into someone's eyes, have you dreaming? Like, that's such a dreamy, dreamy line. Um, I kind of feel like the eyes are the window to the soul. Right away, I can tell if I relate to somebody, if I connect with them just by having really good eye contact. Um, I really, especially being an interviewer, I love eye contact. So, um, yeah, your eyes got me dreaming. Like, oh, gosh, how lovely is that? And the last lyric that I would maybe get tattooed, even though I have no tattoos, if I were to get tattooed, it'd probably be a lyric. Um, it's The Future's Open Wide by uh, Modern English, and it's the song I Melt With You. You know the song, you have to, even if you're not a New Wave fan. Um, it's, I'll stop the world and melt with you. It's such a good song. Um, thinking, like, the future's open wide. Anything is possible. Anything can happen. That's what I live my life by. If I didn't, I wouldn't be here today. So, anything can happen. Um, shout out Eddie Edwards, AIP. Um, but yeah, and anything can happen. The future's open wide. It's just a really optimistic and positive lyric. Now we have a question from the lovely Tiffany Lane. And she wanted to know, you're in the mall and you have the opportunity to get whatever you want free, no limits. There's only one catch. You can choose one store. Which store do you choose and why? So I gave this a lot of thought, probably too much. So it was a really fun and creative question that I may start using in my own interview. So sorry, Tiff, I'm stealing that one. Um, so the rest I was thinking Forever 21 because they have a lot of good stuff. It's cheap. Like I purchased stuff from there. They have some cool, unique items aside from like the real basic shit. But then I thought their stuff's cheap and like I have free reign here. So I thought... Urban Outfitters is so freaking overpriced. Um, so I would go to Urban Outfitters and buy a ton of funky pants because I've been on a funky pants kick lately. I don't know why, but I love them. Um, so yeah, I'd buy some like 70s pants that are like 90 bucks and way too overpriced and I'd buy a lot of them. Oh wait, I wouldn't be buying. I'd take a lot of them. <laughs> I like that. Here's a question from Rad Beans. And I like this one a lot. They were asking, how many artists have been drunk slash high during an interview? 
The answer is an overwhelming amount. There are so many times where I will go downstairs to like a dressing room and they're just rolling up blunts or the whole room just smells like marijuana. It's so funny. I don't do drugs. Um, so walking down to something like that, I just have a laugh and I'm like, all right, it's interview time. Let's do it while you're high. Uh, <laughs> which leads to some pretty funny times, I must admit. So I'm not complaining. Um, a lot of the time, though, it happens with, like, the surf rock bands, the garage rock bands, like, you know, the people that are looped in, they're called stoner rock for a reason, right? Uh, so, yeah, the answer to that is a lot of bands have been high or drunk in interviews. So, uh, who do you think was? If you look through some interviews, who do you think was maybe on a little something-something? Let me know. One of the final questions of today is from Yasmin, and they're asking, how do you get to know the artists? So initially, um, if I don't reach out to the artist myself, it has to be sorted through a manager, label, publicist. Um, then I get 10 to 15 minutes with the bands. Uh, we do what you see on YouTube. We shoot shit for that amount of time, host the interview, and uh, usually then afterwards, we'll just start talking as I'm wrapping up my chords or uh, putting my gear away. We'll just start shooting the breeze afterwards, and that's how a lot of my really good friendships have formed. Um, you get to know each other at the show and then you exchange either phone numbers or email addresses, you follow each other on Twitter and then you keep in touch and it's always like a really awesome reunion when they come back through town for wrestlers and artists. Um, so a lot of my really good friends now are either musicians or wrestlers because of my job. That's one of like my favorite things about running Ambi. It's meeting people and uh, keeping those really cool friendships. So yeah, that's how I get to know the artists. You just kind of, you talk and then you form friendships. It's really, it's really beautiful. And for the last question, this is actually less of a question and more of a compliment. I'm not trying to be self-indulgent, self-indulgent? Narcissistic. Um, I'm bringing this up for a reason, so stay with me. Uh, Dunley said, Alicia, I was just watching the oldest interviews of your channel, and I love seeing how much you've improved. It inspires me so much. I'm doing my first interview in a few days. Uh, thank you so much, Dunley. Um, the reason I wanted to read that is because I've been getting daily, like, tons of messages like that. Young girls, guys, people my age, older, who are starting to get into journalism because they stumbled across an Ambi interview, and they now want to pursue it or have been inspired by it. Um... It's crazy to me. The fact that someone like me who had no confidence starting out, and I still struggle with it once in a while, but is now on camera full time, um, giving other people confidence, it just means the world to me. It really does. Because um, being on camera, it's, it's a big thing. It takes a lot of confidence and a lot of balls. And then again, not tooting my own horn. It's, it's something I struggled with for a really long time. So yeah, seeing people doing what they love because Ambi somehow came into their lives is uh, amazing and makes me so happy. So if this is the case with you too, um, or if you're just a fan, or if you've like have started journalism, oh, thank you, because I know you're thanking me, but like thank you, it makes it all, all the hard work so worth it. So um, yeah, thank you so much. So alas, those are all of the questions for today. I genuinely hope that you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed filming it. And don't be mad if your questions were answered because every single question that is submitted to me, I save in my phone. Um, they're all in my gallery, so I will eventually get to answering your questions in a future Q&A. Thank you to everybody who did submit. Um, it's just a blast getting to talk with you more. I plan on doing more Instagram lives, uh, more things on Twitter. Like, I'm always constantly trying to reply to you all. So, yeah, thank you loads. This was a blast. Um, remember to subscribe to Ambi for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. Like this video and, yeah, drop me a comment with more questions. If you were surprised by an answer, if you have a question about a question that I answered, you know the drill. Um, and, yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you soon on In The Loop. Mwah.